Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with my annual Top 10 Figures of the Year list. But first, Happy New Year! I for one cannot wait to see 2020 in my rear view mirror and welcome 2021 with open arms. This last year has been a total shit show and I cannot wait to see it out of here. And thank you so much if you're watching this premiere tonight, New Year's Eve, and uh, spending time with me instead of watching the ball drop. So thank you very much. Now that being said, big milestone the other day, I reached 7,500 subscribers. So thank you guys so much. And my buddy Firetox sent this to me. This is the Golden Roller Award for 7,500 subs. That is so cool. Firetox makes these 3D printed weapons and accessories, and they are awesome. If you have a 3D printer, you can go his you can go on his website and download these for free. And if you don't have a printer, contact him on Facebook and he can probably get you one made up and sent out. Not only does he make these awesome golden rollers for your awards, he makes the black and red nemesis roller, the green and black toxic roller, old school blue roller, a glow in the dark roller, a joker roller, and for the ladies, a pink roller. So check out Firetox Designs. He makes some awesome stuff. You're probably going to see some of his weapons and accessories on some of these figures that I have conveniently all out of camera shot that I'm going to go over with my list. Now, how these work is before I hit the top 10, I've got to go over my bottom five. And these five are not really bad figures per se, but they are ones I was really disappointed in. You know, I'm looking forward to getting these guys, get them out of the package, start messing around with and they just weren't what I was expecting. They didn't live up to the hype. So we're going to start off with number five with Earthrise Sunstreaker. I was really excited to get Sunstreaker. This figure right here, not this figure, Generation 1 Sunstreaker was one of the first G1 figures I got Christmas 1984. He's got a special place in my heart. We haven't really got any good Sunstreakers in the main line, so I was really looking forward to getting this guy. First complaint right off the bat, you might not be able to, hey, I can't talk, you might not be able to tell on this view right here, but he's got two different shades of yellow. You've got painted yellow here on his chest, which is a darker yellow than the plastic yellow used on the rest of the figure, and here on the forearms as well. That is a different yellow color there and there opposed to everything else. And it really stands out. Now I do have a Toy Hacks upgrade set on the way for Sunstreaker. That supposedly is going to fix that. Another issue Sunstreaker had was I hated the weapon he came with. It's this engine block and somebody is firing fireworks already. It's, what time is it? It's 5.38, it's too early. Anyway, he comes with this engine block or exhaust, whatever, and it turns into his weapon, and in hand, I said this in my review, it looks like a hairdryer. Fortunately, I've got a new weapon for him here. In vehicle mode, he lacks a spoiler that he had in the Generation 1 version. I also have a spoiler attachment also. So that is my number five disappointment, Earthrise Sunstreaker. My number four disappointment, Earthrise Airwave. Now, I love the MicroMaster bases. I have all the G1 bases. They are awesome, and I was so excited to see the MicroMaster bases come out as figures that turned into the base modes. Now, Airwave here has a really cool robot mode, but they failed miserably in his alt modes. The airport mode, it doesn't lay flat. The missile launcher, anti-air defense system, it sucks. It just, it doesn't work. I mean, great robot. The alt modes are terrible. My number three, and this was a disappointment for me because I'm such a big fan, was Earthrise Megatron. 
Now, he's better than I originally thought because I thought, okay, he's just a slight remold of the Siege Megatron, which he is, but they actually took a lot of time with this guy. But that also being said, they could have took a little bit more. He's got a really, really lame weapon right here. It's kind of a cop-out. This is his turret for tank mode. With the tank, the feet still don't fold up and hide away. And he just looks off. This is one of my favorite Transformer characters, and I think they just really dropped the ball on Earthrise Megatron. My number two disappointment for the year, Earthrise Double Dealer. I know some of you may be in shock on this one, but this guy, it just didn't do it for me. I was so excited when he was announced. I got him in hand, and I just, I think he fell flat. First off, mine's jacked up where he leans to the side. I've tried over and over again and can't fix this. He kind of stands like that, and the joints are so weak, they won't even hold the weaponry. Transformation into vehicle mode and robot mode's great. Bird mode is a little wonky because there's a lot of parts forming for the bird mode. So I was expecting a lot more with this figure. Now, it is cool that you can add the uh, Power Masters to him. But, you know, if you're going to add that feature, at least give him a little bit of a gimmick to utilize with him. I mean, Soundwave's got the chest compartment that will pop open. I wish they could have done something with Double Dealer that would actually benefit from owning those other figures as well. So that is my number two disappointment, Earthrise Double Dealer. And my number one disappointing figure for 2020, Earthrise RC. The main reason that this one's a disappointment for me is not only do I wish the transformation was better, but my thing is how plain she looks. They just really dropped the ball on a iconic character. I mean, as far as the transformation, I really don't care that much about that because all of my bots are displayed in robot mode. I have maybe one or two in vehicle mode. And it just really sucks how plain looking she is. Now, RC is the figure I got last. I got Lifeline first. And look at the paint scheme on her. She looks great. Great paint detail there on the eyes and the lips. Great looking figure. Then I got Elita One. Another fantastic paint job. You got the lipstick there on the lips and the blue eyes. And I thought, well, I have these two. Let me get RC. And after I got RC, let's use Lifeline here, for example, because they're the exact same, only repainted. Check that out. RC looks more like an alien. Well, I know she's an alien. But she looks like one of those aliens, you know, you always see Roswell type. She just has no features on the face. Lifeline looks great. RC does not. I really wish they took the time and gave her some paint. So that's it, guys. That is my top five disappointments. Now let's take a look at my top 10 figures, the best of the best, in my opinion, for 2020. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now, before I start going over my top 10 figures of 2020, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber of Patriot Prime Reviews, please consider hitting that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously and also help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers in 2021. Also, keep in mind that this list is my opinion. So please don't be offended if one of your favorite figures didn't make the cut. Also, I am focusing only on Transformers. I buy figures from all different lines and products and companies, but since my channel is mainly Transformers, that's what I'm going to focus on. So now, without further ado, let's start off with number 10, Generation Selects Grease Pit. I Love this guy. Now, I thought Earthrise Ironworks was a great figure. As I said earlier, I'm a big fan of the MicroMaster bases, and I, I just love this guy. The 
Grease Pit or Grease Pit's base from Generation 1 is one of my absolute favorites, and I think the Selects line killed it with this figure. First off, his collars are amazing. And I love how they took the Ironworks figure that transformed into a construction yard and was able to turn this guy into a gas station with just a couple of extra accessories. You've got a gas station sign here and gas pumps. Of course, I make it look like he has a flamethrower. And I thought that was so cool. So I know this was probably a shock to a lot of people. But yeah, my number 10, Earthrise, or excuse me, Generation Selects, Grease Pit. Number 9 is also a Generation Selects figure. Generation Selects Super Megatron. Now, if you watch my video on this guy, you realize the problems I had with him. But after I got those all ironed out, I love this guy. He would actually be higher on my list if his alt modes were any good. His alt modes really kind of suck, but the robot mode is amazing. There is so much playability with this guy. You can transform him. Of course, you can transform him. You can give him different looks. You can give him wings. You can give these rocket pods. His face even flips around to give him a battle mask. He's got ports all over where you can attach battle masters, extra weaponry, and he just looks so badass. This is what we should have got mainline in Earthrise as Megatron, but he's more of a futuristic looking version, so it doesn't really fit with the Earthrise motif. So there is my number nine, Generation Selects, Super Megatron. Number eight was a surprise to me as well because I really wasn't going to pick him up. And I walked into my local GameStop. There he was sitting on the shelf. The Back to the Future 35th Anniversary Gigawatt. Yes, he is back in his packaging because that packaging is glorious. And this is a great figure. No real complaints with this guy whatsoever other than the Mr. Fusion, which you can't see here, it will not stay attached to his weapon mode. At least mine won't. It really, it wouldn't attach to the vehicle mode. Excuse me. It just would not stay on. It will pop off way too easy. So that's the only thing that keeps him at number eight instead of higher. But they did a great job with this. The DeLorean looks awesome. I mean, I couldn't be happier. And this kind of kick-started a Back to the Future collection for me as well, which I have on a shelf up here. I've got a Play School Back to the Future, the Jada Rides. I've got the NECA Marty McFly. I've got Funko Pops, and it's all because of this guy here. And not to mention, Back to the Future is a fantastic movie. So there it is, my number eight gigawatt. Number seven is also a newer figure that I just got a couple weeks ago, and I was really surprised by how much I liked him. Earthrise Trailbreaker. <clears throat> I love this guy. He is so cartoon accurate. The weapon, I love how it just molds into the hand to make it look like it's, it's his hand, just like the Generation 1 toy. The guy is sweet, and you get a lot of bang for your buck with this figure because he is huge compared to another Deluxe. And uh, I just couldn't be happier with this guy. Both he and Hoist really surprised me this year. But I like Trailbreaker so much more. I like his color scheme. I like his alt mode. Alt mode's great, too. The 4x4 pickup truck that transforms so nice and tight. Only complaint is the damn rims. Hasbro and these wheel clips... <laughs> They've got to stop doing that. But other than that, a great figure. I couldn't be happier with this guy. So that is my number seven, Earthrise Trailbreaker. Number six, another Earthrise figure, Earthrise Snapdragon. This one is great. It was almost one of my top three because I love this guy. I always liked Snapdragon. He's one of my favorite Generation 1 figures. I love the jet mode. I love the robot mode. Dinosaur mode's a little wonky, and that carries over into this modern figure as well. The guy looks great. Fantastic color scheme. They actually give him both of his weapons. 
He's a headmaster. The jet mode, jet mode pegs together wonderfully. Nice and tight, very smooth and streamlined. You've got a cockpit for the headmaster to fit in. Like the Generation 1 toy though, the dinosaur mode or dragon mode is a little wonky and it's a real pain in the ass to get the Titan Master to attach as a jaw. And that's what knocks him down a little farther down my list too. But other than that, I love this figure. He is awesome. When I first got him, I couldn't leave him alone. This is a great figure. And unfortunately, he's shelf warming right now, which is a real surprise because I think maybe not many people know about this guy. This, this whole Earthrise line has definitely been a big appeal to us Generation 1 fans. So that is my number six Earthrise Snapdragon. Another new one that just came out that really surprised me that made this list is the Netflix Bumblebee. Yes, a Bumblebee figure made my top 10 list. This mold with uh, cliff jumper, hubcap, bug bite was a great mold, but Bumblebee takes the cake. As far as cliff jumper and the others, they don't really transform into a good representation of their generation one self, where this Bumblebee kills it. I've seen many, many people comment that this is a mini masterpiece figure, and I couldn't agree more. Look how cartoon accurate he is. I mean, down to the details, and the details on this guy, for a mainline figure, the paint details are great. He's got the painted hubcaps. He's got the bumpers right there, the, the windows, the taillights. This guy is awesome. I wish he didn't come with the bazooka. I have a uh, little pistol here that came with another weapon set from Hasbro that really improves these looks. But man, I was so surprised with this guy and really amazed how much I like him. So yeah, Netflix Bumblebee has made, what number? I've lost my place. Netflix Bumblebee is my number five for 2020. Now, keeping on with Netflix is another figure that came out this year. My number four, War for Cybertron Netflix Soundwave. This one also surprised me because I thought, okay, he's just going to be a repaint of Siege Soundwave that turns into the micro cassette recorder. He's so much more than that. There is a lot more detail on this figure than I originally imagined, and I'm really surprised about how good they pulled off the micro cassette recorder mode and that light piping. I am actually surprised the light piping's working at this angle. It's catching my LED light back there, but look at that. He looks amazing. And I couldn't be happier with this guy. He's actually a centerpiece in my sound wave display right now. Plus, I've got Laserbeak up here. He actually came with Laserbeak and Ravage. Laserbeak has a Toy Hacks enhancement there on his back to give him his cannons and thrusters. But yeah, this is a great figure. I couldn't be happier. So that is my number four Netflix sound wave. Number three is a big boy. Earthrise Skylinks. This was actually a figure I wasn't going to get. I was never the biggest Skylinks fan. And I finally, after seeing so many reviews, broke down and got him. And I'm so glad I did. This is an awesome figure. Great details. Great transformation. You've got so much playability because you've got Skylinks here. The shuttle that turns into the bird. You've got the crawler that turns into the Lynx mode. So you got two figures, then you combine them together for dino bird mode, and then they also transform into this giant base, and it is awesome. Now, I have a Firetox enhancement right here. It's this little piece that plugs into his neck to give him more of a G1 look. So I think that really improves the looks of Skylinks. Plus, I've got a Toy Hacks decal set that I ordered last month that I actually got last month, and I just have not put on this guy yet. So yeah, this is a great figure. If you see this one, pick him up. You're not going to be disappointed. He is awesome. And that is my number three, Earthrise Skylinks. My number two figure for 2020, Transformers Earthrise Optimus Prime. This is a great Optimus Prime figure. This is the Optimus Prime figure 
that I dreamed of having as a kid. He's cartoon accurate. And of course, mine has toy hacks decals, as, as usual, that really boost his cartoon accuracy. But even no, not having those, a great figure. Fun transformation. Transformation for this guy is amazing. He's got wonderful articulation. Uh, weaponry, I've got a Firetox weapon here in his hand. And Firetox made me this cool American flag, you know, Patriot Prime. Now, the bot mode is great. I can't brag enough about this. He came with the trailer. His trailer sucks. It was really plain. And, of course, my trailer sits back here on the shelf. I don't really utilize it much. But as far as the Prime figure itself, another mini masterpiece. This guy's amazing. And he's got a few different molds out right now. You've got the Dead Prime, which I have. It's another great reuse of this figure right here, though his head's jacked up. Look for my video review on that where I turn him into a new figure called Monster, thanks to Toy Hacks. And I'm, I'm rambling on. <laughs> this, a great figure. I think everybody owns this guy, and they can all agree this is a wonderful Optimus Prime. And my number two of 2020. And now we come to the final figure. And I've showed this one off before in some other videos. My top figure, my number one of 2020, the figure I have had the most fun with since I purchased it, and the one that I think just hits all the nails on the head is Earthrise Ugh! Scorponok. I love this figure. It's like my child right here. He is huge. He is so comic and cartoon accurate. I've enhanced mine, of course, thanks to Toy Hacks. But once again, just like with Prime, even without those enhancements, this guy looks great. He's got great transformations. All of his modes look spectacular. You know, usually with a triple changer, one mode suffers. Not this guy. He looks amazing. Plus, they gave him his Headmaster. So the head pops off and transforms into Lord Zarek. Lots of posability with the guy. He's got nice tight ratchets. He's got these big claws and he's very, very solid. I mean, this is a heavy figure and I couldn't be happier with him. I love this guy. I have actually got all the enhancements ordered or the upgrades ordered as well. You can get new cannons for him, a uh, visor, new visor that goes across the eyes, new weaponry, his big orange gun. That's one complaint. I wish he came with his orange gun, but Oh, well. But yeah, this guy is awesome. I couldn't be happier. And he proudly stands. Actually, there's a table right there, practically in the middle of my floor. And he's one of the first bots that you see. A great upgrade to the original Generation 1 toy, which was also a favorite of mine. So yeah, my number one figure for 2020, the mighty Scorpidoc. Have you all seen the New Netflix Earthrise and their take on him. That was a little different. All right. So there you go, guys. There is my top 10 figures and top five disappointments of 2020. What do you think? What's your top ones of 2020? Let me know down there in the comments. And as usual, if you like the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. I've got lots of stuff planned for 2021, and I can't wait to see you all here. Guys, once again, this is Patriot Prime signing out. Have a happy new year. Hoo-ah!